Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all in tip-top form. And uh, today I'm going to be doing a review of the book Nothing Is Real by David Hepworth. Here's the details on the back of the book. David Hepworth was a presenter on Whistle Test in the 1980s alongside uh, Mark Ellen and Andy Kershaw. And he's also been a music journalist since the 1970s, most notably, in my opinion, as co-director of and contributor to the magazine The Word, which was edited by Mark Ellen. And uh, I've got a sample copy here of The Word from 2004. Uh, sadly Missed magazine. Uh, Hepworth and Ellen uh, also have a long-running YouTube channel and podcast called Word in Your Ear, which is worth checking out. He's uh, also got a brand new book out on the history of Abbey Road Studios, but the book I've just read is Nothing Is Real. Uh, it's not a major piece of work, having been cobbled together from various old articles for the word and also some uh, longer essays that were originally broadcast on BBC Radio 3 under the title of Nothing Is Real. But it's certainly an engrossing page turner, which I managed to read in just over a day. What all the articles share is a beautiful turn of phrase, there's some real laugh out loud moments, and there's a mining of a rich seam of nostalgia for the golden age of the pop single and the vinyl LP. The BBC Radio 3 essays are at the heart of this book and are fantastic. Um, in particular, there's an enjoyable essay on how we like performers to seem authentic, even if that authenticity is contrived. He starts off the essay by talking about Lead Belly, uh, who often appeared on stage in either convict stripes or the bib and braces of a farmhand. Off stage, he wore immaculately tailored three-piece suits, but that didn't fit the image that had been created for him by musicologist John Lomax. Hepworth goes on to mention how university dropout Robert Zimmerman invented his Bob Dylan persona and also Tom Waits' creation of what Hepworth calls his gravel-voiced boozer polymath character. The essay concludes with Kurt Cobain and Nirvana's appearance on MTV's Unplugged, a format which was designed to show a more stripped-back and supposedly more authentic side to the acts appearing. Uh, Kurt Cobain finishes with a Lead Belly song, Where Did You Sleep Last Night? It was the best performance he ever did, says Hepworth. This is a tour de force essay for me. It's meticulously structured and with a perfect, satisfying conclusion, almost like you'd get in a J.D. Salinger short story. Uh, another highlight is a longish, engrossing article on the blues. It starts with Hepworth hanging out in Memphis with Alex Chilton, who takes him on a drive to show him where the blues came from. It then morphs into a semi-mythical rumination on the origins of the blues via an extended review of the Martin Scorsese Presents the Blues documentaries. The brief retelling of the biographies of artists such as Furry Lewis and Roscoe Gordon will have you reaching for your record collections or clicking on YouTube to hear some of their music. I also enjoyed the article on Hepworth's career on TV. Amongst the things he learnt was that the harder rock stars try to look relaxed when they are being interviewed on TV, the more they betray the fact that they are terrified. This revelation came to him when witnessing Keith Richards couldn't give a fuck attitude. His leg was twitching the whole time and his cowboy boot was tapping on the microphone. Nobody in the studio felt sufficiently empowered to tell him to stop. You also get a few high fidelity type lists. Uh, the one that caught my eye in particular was his 15 memorable gigs. These included Louis Armstrong at Batley Variety Club. I knew that Roy Orbison and the Supremes had played at this Yorkshire Working Men's Club come chicken in a basket cabaret venue. But Louis Armstrong, the first and arguably the greatest soloist in jazz, my mind was well and truly boggled when I uh, read this. You also get a list of 20 songs about journeys across America and Jackson Brown's The Late Show, for example, apparently makes Bruce Springsteen cry every time he hears it. If you read Nothing Is Real, let me know what you think of it in uh, the comments below. And also please consider subscribing to my channel. It doesn't cost anything, of course. Uh, just click on the subscribe button and it will encourage me to keep on producing videos. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again very soon. So take care, everyone.